Hey everyone, this is Jack from the Cardboard Herald, and today we are going over five quick tips that anyone can employ when it comes to the woefully, ominously, painstakingly difficult Arkham Horror, the LCG. All right, tip number one, we are going meta right out the gate because, well, this interdimensional horror game kind of invites that sort of discussion, but also the format invites that discussion, even if it's not the approach that I normally go on these strategy tip videos, but you need to understand when you're sitting down with this game, if you're like, why am I losing? The first thing to ask yourself, are you using the pre-constructed decks? If so, then that's your problem. <laughs> they are great as designed and now, more than ever as a learning tool and a tool for exposure so you can see all the different facets of the game. But the decks are designed in such a way to encourage you to play the game, see how the story could unfold if you were a mediocre hero, and then revisit with a constructed and much more elegantly put together deck to try to achieve one of the better outcomes. It isn't too difficult in order to weed out some of the things that don't work from your deck or add in things that definitely work much more towards your focus. And there's tons of tips online as well as already formatted deck lists that you can pull from using all the materials that's available no matter what Arkham Horror basic set that you have. But bottom line, the game makes it simple to do deck construction and the originally constructed decks are built in such a way to encourage you to access that part of the game. So even if it's a little uncomfortable first, I'm telling you now, work on some basic deck construction. Number two kind of goes along with that. Whether you're playing solo or multiplayer, whatever you're doing, have designated roles. With the investigators, you can plan out, all right, who's going to be focusing on getting the clues? How are you getting clues? And who's going to be focusing on the monsters? Are you going to be stomping them in the face or running away from them scared like a little child? Or are you playing as a little child who happens to stomp monsters? This game gives you a lot of scenarios to work with, but bottom line, Think about what roles each player or each investigator that's in play is going to be focusing on. Lean into those both on the construction perspective as well as the strategic perspective as you make decisions in the game. Number three, take advantage of your mulligan. It is not cheating. The mulligan is there for a reason. If there is a key component in your deck, then don't just take whatever is given to you. The mulligan allows you to scoot through such a significant portion of your deck in order to get some of those key assets out or at least have a chance to do so. An example of this is if you are a heavy combat investigator and you don't have any weapons in your starting hand whatsoever, then almost always it's going to be worth it to ditch that hand and get a weapon because you're going to end up needing that in order to really capitalize on what you are best at. Take advantage of that mulligan. It is incredibly powerful and it is there for a reason. Four, be careful with your cash. Look, I know there are huskies in this game and you may be like, I want a guard dog. I want a husky. I want to put this in play. And there are places for you to have those, but it doesn't have to be right now. Always use your money for what's going to be important at the moment and have money in reserve for flexibility for situations that may come up. Now, if you have a weapon in hand that's going to be important for fighting monsters, yeah, put that in play before the monster comes out. But that doesn't mean just because you have money that you're burning a hole in your pocket and you need to make sure to spend it. That's not this type of game. Having a little extra dough is going to give you a lot of opportunity to react. And a lot of this game is reacting. So don't just go spending money on Huskies willy nilly. Sorry, Nora. And last, just a really basic tip here. There is some argument to be made about risks and probabilities, and there are so many things that can filter into that, whether you're playing on easy, normal, or super hard, difficult mode. But in general, from my experience, if you really want to succeed on a test, like it would be best if you succeed on a test, go for plus two as far as how much you're contributing to that test. If it is direly important that you succeed on a test, shoot for plus three. It is still possible to fail the test at that, but you get much more diminishing returns when you're throwing all of your cards at it to get plus four on a test or plus five on a test. At a certain point, there's only one token in the bag that can make you lose that test and 
that token would make you lose no matter what you play. So don't overly couch it, but at the same time, make sure you're contributing enough to deal with the majority of the penalties that could come up. And if you do that, you're going to be much more prepared to handle all of the horrors that this game is going to throw at you. And those are our five tips. And this is a game that is hotly debated where there are a million tips that people would give. So I want to hear in the comments below, do you have beef with our tips? Are there tips that you think other people should know about that you would recommend to all new players or advanced players or even the most extreme of hardcore mode players? What are the tips you want to coalesce into existence in this comment section? You know what to do. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for gaming. Thanks for being awesome. I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald.